What's up guys? Welcome to another YouTube video. Today I'm going to be walking us through how to balance and structure your weekly routine combining running and weight training. So I'm going to lay that out after the first portion of this video. Um, we're going to go hit a 20 or sorry 10 mile run and on this 10 mile run it's just relatively easy uh, low heart rate and yeah I'm just going to take you guys through that and then we'll go back and uh, walk you guys through how to structure your weekly training routine as an athlete who likes to lift and run. Um, so with that being said, let's go get after it. Um, I'm gonna be carrying some sodium electrolytes with me as we'll see that in my hand, 250 milligrams of sodium slash electrolytes. And that's all I take on a 10 mile run. We did have over easy eggs, well dippy eggs this morning and we had a protein coffee. So um, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling ready, feeling like a weapon. Let's go do this shit. Let's go do this shit. Is that cooler? Let's go do this shit. On these runs, I always think about like a key situation. So I always like to say, never say what if, instead say, why not me? So I used to always think of these, these ideas and, and never follow through with it. I would always be like, well, what if I did that? Or, you know, what if I did what somebody else did, stuck to that diet? built the business, started vlogging. I used to keep saying, what if, what if? And then instead I replaced what if with why not me? So everything I do running these 100 miles, if someone else can run 100 miles with the same shoes, the same heart, the same legs as me, why not me? Same with vlogging, believe in yourself, dieting, like why not you? It doesn't, it doesn't take anything other than to say, why not me, not what if. Ignore what if and always say, why not me. So I'm wrapping up these 10 miles. There's portions where I want to give up. But like I said, I'm not a what if person. That's not me. All right, so just like that, we wrapped up a 10 mile run at a eight, I think it was 824 minute per mile pace. Felt really good. All I had, like I said, was a protein shake and two eggs and 100 grams of egg whites. So I feel really good, I feel strong, and um, we are 11 weeks out from attempting to run 100 miles in the Arizona desert. But yeah, don't got much to say other than, let's get you guys that good programming to balance weight training and running. Yeah, that's all I got. Bad day to be smiles. What's up guys? So we're back and ready to talk about how to balance weight training and running or lifting and running or bodybuilding and running or whatever you're interested in. A lot of people who say, you know, I can't balance both or they, they struggle with the idea of it one affecting the other. At the end of the day, you gotta realize that what you can sustain is gonna provide the most bang for your buck, the most progress, the desired outcome. The thing that 
seems very hard, you're not going to stick with it as as much, and it's going to be tough to adhere to, and it's not going to be as as enjoyable. Um, so I, I want you to think about that and be honest with yourself and how much time you have. And I'm going to speak from um, two areas of my life that, and it, this will apply to, I'm sure, anybody in their life where they're at right now. Um, because right now, I'll be honest, I have more time to train because it is my job, but it wasn't always like that. And um, even now, it's, it's pretty hard. So to dial everything back to square one and talk about how to balance lifting and running, what you want to think about is what's your priority. So that's what you have to establish first. Once you figure out your priority, you're going to understand what needs to be first or more emphasized in the week span of time because we're breaking a split into a week each week you know you continuously do the same and that's why i said making a consistent appropriate sustainable week routine is going to create a long-term outcome rather than making a weekly routine that is super difficult the odds of you sticking out for say say you do a really difficult month for three months well the person that had the less difficult one that they could stick to for 10 months, 12 months, 24 months, is gonna have a lot more progress even though they might have not worked as hard as you did initially, but it's what you do over a long term. Results come through small, consistent changes and small habits. So diving right into this, I want you to keep that in mind. Now this is what I did when I worked construction and I went to college. And it was a very busy time and fitness was something I love, but it's made to enrich your life, not take away. So I would do three days of running, and I would do three days of weight training. Preferably what I like to do is I like to alternate to give my body rest. So Monday's lift, Tuesday's run, Wednesday lift, Thursday run, Friday lift, Saturday long run, and then Sunday rest. So three days lifting, three days running. Now that can be broken up into push pull legs and then you're running, or it could be broken up to as far as weight training, it could be chest, shoulders, back biceps, legs core, which is essentially the same as uh, push pull legs. That kind of split is for people that aren't necessarily training for a marathon, aren't necessarily training for any specific or any specific goal of stepping on stage. That is more for just general health, making steady progress, consistent progress and amazing progress. Now, people that say that you have to work out and lift six times a week to make any progress are, are completely crazy. The reason I say that is because if you dial in your nutrition, you dial in your training, you dial in your sleep, and you train hard on those given days, there's no reason for you not to recover and be able to progress just as much. Um, there is an argument saying the more time you're in the gym, the more you'll grow, which I do believe there that can be. But when you're talking about running alongside of that, that doesn't give your body much time to recover. That's where I think it's important to break it up. I do want to preface this. If your goal is to add as much muscle tissue as possible and you want to step on stage or you want to be more stronger than you are running, I think you knock down the running to two days a week rather than three days a week and you up the lifting to four days a week and then maybe run two days a week. So a four day lifting split. So that could be, that could be chest, back, legs, shoulders, and core. That's what I've done before four day split. I actually really like this and two days of running. My two days of running are normally 30 minutes or whatever a gym session would be. So if I'm feeling better on my running and I have that aerobic base, I'll run for like an hour and 10 minutes. So whatever my gym session would normally be, which is around how long it takes for me to get through my weight training. So the splits we talked about so far is a three day lifting split and a three day running split, a four day lifting split, and it two day running split, those three days and three days of lifting and running are more for the balance. Um, not really going after any specific goal, just more of like balance in the physique and performance and endurance. The four days lifting and the two days running are more for those who wanna build a little more muscle tissue but maintain their aerobic base. And then lastly, I'm gonna go into the more aggressive portion, which is five days lifting, one day running. Now, I don't recommend this for building your aerobic base. I recommend this for maintaining your aerobic base, but I think you have to understand this. When I have done this and I've exper experimented with five days lifting and one day running, I've noticed that I dramatically decreased my aerobic base, and that is due to less time, less practice running, right? So your body's going to naturally do and 
prioritize more the emphasis and the stress that's put on it. So if I'm stressing my body out from lifting, it's going to add more muscle. Um, so I'm going to get a greater response out of that. Now, if I just run, I'm going to get a greater response aerobically and I'll get better at running. So in this essence, we're talking about five days lifting, one day running. I think it's very crucial to have one day where you do run because it, it still gives your body the sense like, okay, you're familiar with it and I just think it helps maintain some aerobic capacity. So what I like to do is I like to lift. If I'm in a real heavy, like when I was bulking, I would lift five times a week and run one day a week and that would be a 30 minute run, three to four mile run. And that kept my aerobic base. I knew that I could always run into three to four miles, which had me at like a specific aerobic base, which was a lot lower than where I am now training for an ultra, but I was a lot stronger and bigger. What I want you to conclude from this so far is that whatever emphasis that you put on during the week or during the month over the long term is what you're gonna progress in. It's no scientific formula that whatever stress that you provide on your body is the stress that your body's gonna adapt to. That's the beautiful thing about fitness. It can always be a, a pendulum of balancing things Whatever you wanna improve on, say, I wanna get faster, that's gonna get better because you're gonna be doing it more, you're gonna be running more. Say you wanna get stronger, you're gonna be lifting more, your aerobic base might go down. Now to do both at the same time, you're balancing, but you're not really getting better at any. And then when we talk about the other side of the equation, the same thing that I have told you. So the three day running and the three day lifting, that stays the same, that's the perfect balance, I think, for just maintenance of aerobic base and lifting. Those three runs can be whatever you feel comfortable with. So for me, if I had to choose a running amount to maintain muscle and to grow muscle and to maintain aerobic base and to even grow aerobic base, I would like to do either three low and slow, probably 45 minute runs, zone two, or two days, zone two, one day speed workout. This way, it provides a spike in heart rate during those workouts, which allows your heart rate to recover, which in essence builds your engine, builds your aerobic capacity um, and your work capacity for endurance. Now let's go back through the same thing and talk about the running emphasis. So a four day running split, two day lifting split, you're gonna maintain your muscle. And the way you do that is say you're four days running, whatever two days that you can fit that into, I would preferably do chest and back and legs and shoulders. Now I say that because the leg days are gonna be light because you're gonna be running more. You're not gonna to wanna to overload the legs. You're not really gonna grow the legs much. As far as maintenance, that's all you need. Just a little bit of resistance, like machines are great for this, leg extension, leg curls, uh, hack squat, leg press, those are amazing. Smith machine squat, those are absolutely amazing to maintaining your muscle in your legs. I do four exercises for legs, four exercises for shoulders. The shoulders are gonna maintain themselves on four exercises, normally around 12, eight to 12 reps per set, just like you would on any other split. Four sets per body part and around eight to 12 reps. In this four day of running, so chest and back, legs and shoulders, chest and back is gonna be normally four chest exercises and four back exercises. That's all you need to maintain your muscle in my opinion now you might be like what about arms what about core i like to do core at the end of my runs or in the morning when i wake up i'll do crunches or i'll do hanging leg raises after my run if i run on a treadmill um, but i like to do med balls those are all great but i only do core normally on uh, my shoulder days or my leg days or around my running so brief takeaway Four days of running, two days lifting, being chest back, legs and shoulders. You don't need to hit an arm day because you are using your arms in pushing movements and um, pulling movements. So pushing movements coming from the shoulders, you got the triceps. Pulling movement coming from back, you got the arms. Um, you don't need to hit a specific arm day. Your goal is not to get huge arms, even though having big arms is awesome. The goal is to run faster. So let's talk about the next split. Five days with two days lifting. Now you might be like, what happened to the rest day? I don't like to take rest days if I'm running five days a week and I'm lifting two days a week. I don't like to lift only one time a week. This is just my personal experience. When I don't lift at least two times a week, I tend to feel sloppy, I tend to feel injured, I tend to feel soft, I don't like it. I like lifting two days a week. Now the downfall is you don't have as much rest, but in my opinion, um, if you you know don't hurt yourself or kill yourself on 
your runs throughout the week and your weight training. Think of it as a long-term consistency rather than I got to hurt myself and feel the burn every week. When you think about it like that, it leans to burnout. What I want you guys to think of is fitness is what you can do over a long period of time. So the five days of running and the two days of lifting is going to provide you an extreme amount of aerobic base. And how I would like to do that is I would do two days of zone two with a speed workout, two days of some more zone two. I love zone two, it allows my body to recover. It doesn't affect my weight training and I don't actually really need a rest day, surprisingly, because I'm not doing high intensity sprints, fast runs. Most of the work is low heart rate zone two. So I don't feel like I need to take a rest day because I don't overtax my body. Now, if I was sprinting every single day and doing track workouts, tempo workouts, I would need a rest day and I wouldn't be able to lift, but that's how I do it. Now for the last part of building out your program, if you have a lot of time and you have more time on your hands, you could overlap days. The way to overlap days is by splitting it up in a morning session and an evening session. Now you want this because you want your body to have maximal nutrition in between your workouts and time between your workouts to fuel your body and give it enough time to recover to hit that next training session. Now, I could do this when I had a lot of time. I don't have that time anymore, and most people don't have that time to train twice a day. Um, some days I do get that time, but more than likely I don't. So what that looks like when I do have that time, I'll do Mondays will be a run, zone two, and then in the evening I'll do chest and triceps. Tuesday is a morning run, and then we have back. Wednesday is morning run, and then we have legs. That is the worst day of the week, by the way. Thursday is tempo run, so speed workout in the morning, and then it is arms. Friday is morning run and shoulders and core in the evening. Saturday is normally whatever my lagging body part is, or it's the body part you like to grow the most. So for me, it was chest. So I hit chest twice a week, and I did everything else once a week, and then it was also a day where I had my long run. Um, and then Sunday I rested. So that is kind of how I split up my training schedule. And I hope that provides you some knowledge. But the general consensus here is the perfect split, I think, to balance and you know make consistent progress that you can stick to is a three-day running split and a three-day lifting split alternating the days that way you don't get bored it doesn't get monotonous you can constantly switch it up and if there is a day where you you feel like hey I'm, I'm not really getting stronger this is where intuition comes in and being intuitive with your training if you're feeling weak taper back to running to four days of lifting two days running if you're feeling like your aerobic base is slipping away and you're, you're getting pretty big pull the lifting back and go into four days of running and two days of lifting. It's a constant pendulum that you guys have to understand. There is no one size fits all. It's what time do you have and what's your goal? Your goal is to get fast, pull back the lifting. Your goal is to get strong, pull back the running. Your goal is to gain muscle, pull back the running a bit. If your goal is to progress in running as fast as possible, pull the lifting back. It's a constant there change of motion, whatever your goal is. Don't think that it's a one size fits all equation. You gotta understand that life is all about figuring out your problems and making time for the things that matter to you. If your goal is to run an ultra marathon like I am currently, my goal is not to go and lift six times a week. It's to run more than I lift. Right now, I'm running more than I lift. I lift two times, three times a week if I'm lucky, and I'm overlapping those days. So it's just, you have to make with what's due, right? But there, I will not sacrifice a day or a week of not lifting. Now that just might be my ego, which I try to drop, but it's also how I feel and what makes me happy. I like to lift, I like to be strong, I like to be big, so I'm not willing to pull the weight training completely. If you want, if you wanna get really good at running and you feel like you're big enough and you don't mind losing muscle, pull the weight training. But I promise you lifting two days a week, chest, back, leg, shoulders is just enough to maintain your muscle running and lifting. With that being said, if you need more information on this, you can apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching, link below in the description, or I have my app with pre-built out programs. And I'm dropping one January 1st of a three-day on, three-day off hybrid athlete program, which is gonna do 
which is to give you guys that foundation going into the new year of progressing both weight training and running. It'll be an eight week program and it'll get you set up for the first two months and give you an idea of how I train and how I run. And I will share that with you January 1st on the Nathan French app, link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Like always, stay corn fed. Let me know if you have any questions below.